Hi everybody, Ellen here. Today I come to you guys with my November and December wrap up. And yeah, really didn't exactly go as planned because I did have like some prompts and whatnot to follow and try to read books based on those prompts, even though I never ended up posting my December one because reading slump, YouTube slump, whatever. But I did end up reading some books. A lot of them were actually um, tomes when I actually ended up sitting down and actually reading something. So let's just talk about them. Okay, so if we start with November, I ended up reading four books. Only two of those were on my actual original TBR, but who's counting? Um, so one of the books I read, which is actually from my 12 books will destruct this year, kind of thing uh, and that was Red Rising by Pierce Brown I've had this on my TBR for years and years and years and I just finally decided it is time to pick it up I've heard great things about it this is sort of a sci-fi novel and I just didn't really love it so in this one we meet Darrow and he lives on um, Mars they're supposed to like sort of mine this thing in the earth to be able to, you know, live on Mars, to make it habitable. And then he actually finds out that Mars has been habitable for decades and that the Reds, which is part of his sort of um, minor group, are basically just slaves working away for the rich people. And it sounds like a cool some concept and I do really like sci-fi, but... I just don't know how to describe it, but I was just not that invested in the book, to be honest. I didn't really like love any of the characters. There were some cool concepts here and there, of course, and there was a lot of shit happening. But after a while, I couldn't even care, even though there was shit happening. Usually, I really enjoy books that are plot-driven as well as... I mean, you need to get to know the characters, because otherwise I wouldn't care about the plot. But this was really plot-driven. Um, to the extent that you didn't really get caught up with the characters, like couldn't get a mental picture in my head and that's really important for me when I read books. And I just didn't care after a while and I just had to sort of force myself to read the last 150 pages or so. And this is not a very thick book at all. This is like 370-ish pages. Um, but yeah, didn't love it. It was alright, but I didn't love it. and. Don't really know if I'm going to continue with the series, to be honest. Uh, probably not at this point, but who knows along the way. Um, but I ended up giving this book 3 out of 5 stars. Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang. This is the second book in the Pop War trilogy, I want to say. I don't know if that's the name of the trilogy, but that's the name of the first book. So basically, in the first book, we get to meet this character called Rin, and she uh, basically is an adopted child from like the war and stuff, uh, the first Poppy War or second Poppy War, I really remember which, <laughs> from the second Poppy War I think, and um, she lives basically with these horrible horrible people that had to take her in because of like the laws and stuff, if they had less than three kids they have to take in one out of tea I think it was, and they basically sell Poppy which is basically a drug and she basically works in their shop and she decides she wants a better life for herself she wants to change the way things are going for her so she decides to study like a crazy maniac and get into this really like prestigious um, military school basically where you get to learn about like magic and how to fight and like you know you want to get into the military basically and uh, it's really cool concept with cool powers and cool abilities and everything like that, um, like gods and stuff, um, very dark, very morbid sort of series to be honest, uh, it's a really quick read though and I'm loving the series so much and I don't know why I didn't <laughs> read this book sooner because the pop war definitely was on my shelf for years as well. Um, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed this one, even though it was really, really dark. But yeah, I ended up giving this book 5 out of 5 stars. Can't wait to read the third one, but I have to buy it first. And then I actually listened to um, two audiobooks this month, which made up two out of the four books I read from November. Um, but the first one was Redawn by Brandon Sanderson. 
and uh, I think it's Jancy Patterson is the woman that helped him write these sort of short stories. I'll insert a picture so you'll see the real name. Um, but this one we basically get to know more about Alanique, where she comes from, her background and stuff like that, and how her power works and Basically, this is what happens while Spansa is away. So basically, during the second book. Um, I did enjoy it. I didn't like it as much as the first short story. Um, but I did end up getting this 4.5 out of 5 stars. Then the last book I read was Lux by Brandon Sanderson. Also co-written by a different guy whose name I can't remember, but you can see it here. Um, but yeah, this is basically a Texas Reckoners novel. So I love the Reckoners series. They are on my shelf. Um, and I love those so much, but this basically just takes place, you know, in a different state. <laughs> and uh, these are books about people that, you know, something happened and they some people developed sort of abilities, powers, if you will. They're really cool powers, not like these uh, mainstream powers that you usually read about in these kind of books. It's really like different, which I like. And I like the characters and it was such a quick audiobook and the narrator is really good as well, as always for Brandon Sanderson's books, to be honest. And they're just trying to save the day because some of the epics, people with powers, have gone a little bit crazy and try to, you know, control everybody else, basically. So this is about the main character and his friends trying to basically get rid of them. And shit happens and it, stuff goes awry, to be sure. Uh, but yeah, it was definitely a very intense audiobook. Um, and he ended up giving this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. And then we move on to my December wrap-up then. I ended up reading five books, like I said before, two of which was actually on my TBR. Could have been better, could have been worse. Um, so one of the books that was not on my TBR originally was a manga I got from my fiancé for Christmas. And that is A Man and His Cat by Uma Sakurai. This is the first volume. And it's so cute. And this is basically about a middle-aged middle-aged man uh, who's living alone and he basically decides to adopt a cat. This cat happens to be like overlooked by so many people going there to buy cats because everybody wants a kitten but this cat is chubby and he's adult and he's so cute. <laughs> I can't even stop talking like that. Um, but yeah, he ends up going home with this man and it's basically about them getting to know each other and about this man trying to figure out how you're supposed to approach a cat, how you're supposed to get to know a cat and he has like this sort of manual he reads from figuring out oh no, what did I do wrong, why did the cat write like that? And it's so cute and heartfelt and made me tear up because it's so cute! I ended up giving this volume 4 out of 5 stars. And I also ended up reading Cytonic by Brandon Sanderson. This is the third book in the Skyward, uh, I want to say, quartet. Um, and this one, I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm not going to talk about it directly. But the first book, we meet Spensa and she wants to get into this sort of flight academy school, which is a little bit of hitches along, along the way, but she managed to get in with some help. And basically, she and her peers are supposed to try to defend Detroitus, the planet that the human race has had to um, escape to. Um, Defend the planet from the Krell, which is sort of this alien species who are trying to make humans extinct. So, uh, yeah, basically that's what the first book is about. A lot of shit goes down. This is a really awesome series. And this was not an exception from that. Even though I do talk in my uh, swapping phone screen time for reading time a little bit about my disappointments about this book. So if you want to know more about that, check it out down below. Um, but yeah, I ended up giving this book 4 out of 5 stars. We got some real, real hunkers. So the first one being Ruin by John Gwynn. I read, admittedly, the majority of these pages in November, which is why I ended up reading much in November. So I read like the last about 200 pages or so in December. Um, this is book three in this series called The Faithful and the Fallen and I'm obsessed with John Gwynn to be fair and this series in particular. Um, but yeah, this is the third book but in the first book we get to know uh, Corbin and a couple of his friends and his sister and everything like that and basically they are, they are trying to 
uh, fights for this prophecy. There's be going to be a bright star who's like the good guy who's trying to make sure basically that all evil and hell on earth won't you know, get onto Earth, defend the human race, and then there is the Black Sun who's trying to make it happen. So, like, all the bad shit going down, that's what they want to happen. And basically just a lot of people trying to take sides and decide what the hell do I want to happen on Earth. And there's magic, there's giants, there's a shitload of wars. There's a lot of POVs in this series and I love that so much because it's so well done and you just can't help but love everybody, even the evil guys. And that's another thing I really like about this series, the fact that you get to read both from the good guys and the bad guys point of view, which makes you get like the entire picture of things. And it's just so well done and it's addictive and even though they're freaking huge every single book, doesn't stop you from wanting to read more. I end up giving this book 5 out of 5 star, cause how could I not? And then the last book in that particular series is Wrath. This is the fourth book. It's admittedly a little, little bit smaller than the third book, but not by much. Uh, this is by John Gwynn, like I said. This is the final book in the series, and that makes me so sad because I read this in two days. And it's like, if you count the way the dictionary, it's... 685 pages and I read this in two days and I was addicted and I need more to be fair. I wish it was like a 10 book series. Um, I just explained the other books so I want to talk that much about this one but this book made me feel... <laughs> I usually never cry to books but this series entirely like I've been teared up. I've been teared up several several times the third book made me bawl my eyes out so i immediately threw myself into this book it did not disappoint because shit goes freaking down and even though there was one thing in this book i thought was a little bit predictable it was still done very well and i was not disappointed you know about how it was handled or anything like that and just you know all the feels in the world and i just want to plow on through everything John Gwynn at this point and I'm gonna make sure that happens um, so yeah this was amazing as well and I gave it 5 out of 5 stars and you know just read the series people come on the very last book which was technically the first book I finished in December is Is To Belong and the author is Cynthia Kadahota, Kaduhata and this is basically about uh, immigrants from Japan and when the Second World War stopped, you know, after the bombing in Hiroshima. So this is basically about uh, a bunch of Japanese Americans that were sort of caught in the middle in the Second World War since Japan um, bombed Pearl Harbor in Hawaii and then the Americans in their turn uh, bombed um, Hiroshima and in this book the main character is a little girl and her father has been sort of in this work camp prison like place uh, together with a bunch of other Japanese Americans because um, they're not allowed out and about like everybody else and at the end of the war they are sent back all of them to Japan even though the kids are actually born in America and it's basically you get to follow them like on the boat ride back to Japan and how they sort of try to accumulate themselves in um, in Japan and trying to uh, get on uh, the main character his grandparents live right outside of Hiroshima in like a small village so it's very poor it's very hard to survive there and it's very heartfelt very like eye-opening in a way and yeah it was a really good read really good um, narrator as well and I did really enjoy to get to learn a little bit more about the way it was at that point um, and I gave this book four out of five stars so yeah, those were all of the books I read during November and December. Hopefully after this I will be back to doing a monthly wrap up like I used to. So starting January, I'm gonna hold myself to that. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. And yeah, I hope to see each other in the next one. Bye!